Hi everyone, thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Jen and I'm the Charity Marketing Associate here at Canada Helps. And uh, our webinar today is going to be led by Liz Hugeson and Woodrow Rosenbaum from the Give3 Foundation, as well as our very own Nicole Denessi from um, Marketing and Client Relations Associate here at Canada Helps. And uh, for those of you who are new to Canada Helps, we are a social enterprise focused on helping charities. We provide charities with open access to our affordable online fundraising platform and training so they can better connect with the people who support them. And for donors, we offer a one-stop shop for donating and fundraising for any registered Canadian charity online. And since 2000, over 1.8 million Canadians have donated through Canada Helps, and together we've raised over 900 million in donations. So uh, I'm just going to pass over the mic to Woodrow, who will get us started with the webinar. Thanks. Hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's good to be here and uh, very excited to uh, be speaking to so many people. Um, Giving Tuesday this year looks like it's going to be bigger than ever. Um, I've been working with uh, the Giving Tuesday Canada team since the first year of Giving Tuesday in Canada in 2013. We've seen remarkable growth every year new records all the time, and I also work on um, a global Giving Tuesday data project where we have been analyzing results from Giving Tuesday in the U.S. and around the world uh, with the help of uh, many donation platforms, including Canada Helps, to understand not just the impact, but also how we can motivate more giving and best practices for engaging nonprofit support. So we're going to talk today about Giving Tuesday and, um, and how it's a platform for people to support causes they care about and should just do good stuff, which is um, both a, a tagline that we've been using and a, and a platform for engagement. So one of the key things to understand about Giving Tuesday is that there is no one way to do it. There are thousands of charities in Canada, uh, tens or hundreds of thousands of organizations, businesses, nonprofits, schools community groups around the world who participate and almost as many ways that to participate. Um, so this is really, it's an open source, co-created platform to do good things, to do good stuff uh, in any way that, that makes sense for you and for your organization, for your supporters. So I'll talk a little bit about the impact that we've seen in Canada and around the world for Giving Tuesday and, and some of the best practices uh, and um, and learning from from that uh, research. First of all, Giving Tuesday last year <clears throat> really uh, it it it's been a global phenomenon for for quite some time. But last year really reached a threshold where we measured Giving Tuesday activity in more than 150 countries around the world. Um, really, pretty much everywhere there was activity in Antarctica, and there was an activity in North Korea. Um, and of course, in, in about 42 countries where there were active, specific um, coalition teams putting this together. And in Canada, we saw that um, also um, realized through over 40 community campaigns where uh, groups in cities and, um, and in different interest areas come together to celebrate Giving Tuesday and, and motivate support for good in their local communities in the same way that we do on the national and global level. We had, as I said, there are many, many organizations. We're now well over 6,000 charities and businesses in Canada that, that are participating. And in fact, it, it's becoming difficult to measure exactly how many. Uh, of course, we encourage all organizations to become Giving Tuesday partners, to go to givingtuesday.ca and sign up and create a profile page. And there's certainly lots of value in doing that. You get lots of access to resources, the latest news, and a place to demonstrate uh, to your community how you're participating. But every year we see more and more organizations that are activating Giving Tuesday without necessarily becoming a partner, which is a good problem to have. Um, that just shows just how grassroots this movement uh, is and how um, Giving Tuesday is just because it's a moment for us to get together and do good. Nevertheless, we do have six, more than 6,000 official Tuesday partner, we encourage everybody to sign up. It's free and it's lots of benefits. Um, we also look at how people are, how much people participate in Giving Tuesday in Canada each year, and we estimate that six million Canadians um, did something to celebrate Giving Tuesday last year, um, supporting nonprofit causes and their communities in many, many different ways. 
Um, interestingly, <clears throat> one, excuse me, one thing we've learned from that survey research is that most people who participate in Giving Tuesday do so in more than one way. Giving Tuesday is very compelling. We see more than two-thirds of people who are aware participating in some way. And donating money is the most common way that people in Canada participate. But most of those people also do something else. And many people do things like volunteer or donate food or clothing, um, lots of other ways that, uh, that people get involved. Um, and uh, for example, we, we estimate that nearly 2 million Canadians volunteered for Giving Tuesday last year. Some of the examples that we see of the creative ways that people get together to support their communities come from the more than 40 community campaigns across Canada where coalitions of nonprofits and their supporters and schools and businesses come together to celebrate Giving Tuesday. And so every year we see some really interesting creative things. We, we had 40 developers who did social good apps in Calgary last year. My personal favorite was uh, more than 1,600 poutines for good sold in Victoria, BC last year. And every year we see more and more of these new and creative ways that people get involved. Um, so you can see that there's there are lots of options and opportunities. We'll talk about some of the best practices, but we also have ideas, kits, and case studies on our website if you're looking for to do something and you're not sure uh, what kind of campaign to create. Lots of easy ideas that you can pick up. Of course, donations are a really important part of Giving Tuesday. I mean, we always say it's not Fundraising Tuesday. It is Giving Tuesday. Nevertheless, uh, donating to charity is the most common way that Canadians participate. And we have seen every year substantial growth as measured by Canada Helps and other platforms in the donation results on the day of Giving Tuesday. Um, not only year-over-year -year increase, but now totaling over 468% more than uh, the pre-Giving Tuesday amount um, measured in 2012. So we're seeing it, that it is a very big day for people to uh, support charity with their donations. As I said, we've been working on this um, data project that started in the U.S. Um, with a couple of dozen uh, donation processors, payment processors, um, sharing their day of Giving Tuesday results. We now have actually over 60 data platforms providing data in the U.S. Um, and um, more around the world. Uh, this project is now in over 50 countries where we're collecting data about Giving Tuesday donations, but also just about uh, transactions, uh, donation transactions year-round, in fact, going back 10 years. And we've been able to learn a lot about Giving Tuesday and about how to motivate giving from, from those results. So one of the first things that we measured was just how much of an impact is Giving Tuesday making? How, how, how much donation happens on the day? That was kind of the, the first thing we were looking at. And each year we've measured more and more in, in directly counted online donations in the U.S. We are looking this year at getting a better figure for other parts of the world. Part of this growth is our increased ability to measure and more platforms reporting. Um, but we see a significant year-over-year -year increase uh, in the real dollars donated. This is also a very conservative estimate. We estimate that over $300 million were donated in that 24-hour period, but that doesn't count anything offline. It doesn't count um, anything that, uh, that happened the day before, day after, which are also elevated days. Um, it assumes that all monthly donations pledged on the day, which is a big part of Giving Tuesday. Uh, in fact, it looks like a bigger part of Giving Tuesday than other donation events. Um, it just accounts those at face value, and obviously they have a much uh, larger value to the organizations that receive them. Um, and we're very aggressive about deduplication. So we know that this is really a very, uh, a very small portion of the total donations done, but that's been, those are the numbers that we can actually directly count and know that um, they're not otherwise duplicated. So it's just a big day. There's lots of donations happening. We see the same, the same kind of pattern, although proportionally smaller in Canada. So that's pretty exciting. Um, the other thing that we have no noticed, which is really interesting, um, is that there, I mean, there's lots of donation records and other records that we see, including an actual Guinness Book of World Records uh, um, result one year. Um, every year we see a bigger and bigger result, 
what this is looking at, though, is GuideStar uh, search results. So this is looking at the, the number of times people looked up information on GuideStar about a charity's operations. And although Giving Tuesday is a somewhat reactive environment and there's a lot of spontaneous giving, turns out that on GuideStar, it's also the biggest day of the year, far outweighing December 31st, which historically had always been the biggest, the, 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 their busiest day. Uh, Giving Tuesday has been, the last two years in a row, their biggest day, not just of the year, but ever, for people looking up information about nonprofits, to look at their, their, their spending and their patterns and their efficiency and their programs and what they do and how those, that money is being used. So although it is a very spontaneous environment, it turns out it's also the time when people are most reflective and most thoughtful about their giving. So that was a somewhat surprising, really exciting result uh, that, we, that we measured. The other thing we wanted to look at with Giving Tuesday was, is this just moving money around? And that was one of the concerns in the early years was we have this big day of giving, and was that going to cannibalize the rest of the year? And uh, so by having uh, data from dozens of sources uh, going back more than 10 years at the actual transaction label level, we were able, uh, with the help of 150 volunteer data scientists, to do some evaluation of that and discovered that really the, 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 what Giving Tuesday does is has a net impact, a net lift on giving, telling us that there's an opportunity to measure, message donors again and overcome donor fatigue. Giving Tuesday statistically looks a lot like a natural disaster. We see a big increase in donations without a corresponding drop-off showing us that there is this opportunity to engage and that we haven't tapped out this ability of donors to contribute. And when we look at the overall file, we see that three quarters of Giving Tuesday donors are giving again to an organization that they already support. So a lot of that result is driven by that additional gift that, that organizations are getting from their existing supporters. And about 25%, obviously, the other, the other quarter, are people that are new to the organization. So they may have given again elsewhere, but they're giving, uh, but they've been newly acquired by by the organization that uh, that they give to on Giving Tuesday, and that's looking at over, overall all Giving Tuesday over the last um, five years. Um, and and I think this is really important because again, it points to this fact that we, with the right message and a compelling call to action, we can motivate our donors again, as well as use this as an opportunity for acquisition. So we've also now been looking at what are the patterns of behavior and how does that shift when people when people give to Giving Tuesday, both uh, in terms of behaviors of newly acquired donors, um, as well as uh, what happens when existing donors um, make their first Giving Tuesday gift. And we see that in both cases, uh, we we have higher retention and better value from those donors once they're engaged in Giving Tuesday. This is an example of an analysis that was recently done. And essentially what it showed is that the existing donors um, really supercharge their giving after their first Giving Tuesday donation. So on a year, this is 2015, for example, we see that the donors who convert to Giving Tuesday are, are already the more valuable donors. They're giving more and they're giving more often, which you would expect any day of the year and your most frequent donors are more likely to show up on that day. But after their first Giving Tuesday donation, the years following, what we see is an enormous increase in both their frequency and value of donation to those to that same organization. And we've likewise seen some, um, some very compelling numbers on higher, uh, higher retention and re repeat donation behavior from donors acquired on Giving Tuesday. Uh, a number of other platforms have done analysis to show that those donors are more likely to give again, more likely to to uh, get their their friends to donate. So, w although it is a fairly spontaneous environment, it is an opportunity to engage donors for the long term and to um, and to amplify the effect that you're getting from uh, from your existing donor base. And one of the one of the things that 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 relates to that is this effect that we've seen that Canada Helps has now measured really carefully that shows that organizations that participate in Giving Tuesday do substantially better on Giving Tuesday, of course, but they also do much, much better on all of December, that critical time of the year for fundraising. So Giving Tuesday, um, that, that impact of 
getting more, get starting your campaign earlier, engaging your donors in additional time, having a better acquisition opportunity, all those things are, show, are showing that giving those organized, those participating organizations a much bigger advantage on their entire year. And interestingly, as I mentioned, that um, a, a huge increase in the number of monthly pledges uh, for those participating organizations. So it's really a, a, huge, a, a big, a huge opportunity cost to not doing something for Giving Tuesday. Um, so at the very least, what we encourage everybody to do is make sure that you tie this Giving Tuesday into your, your overall communications and campaign plan for the year. Think about what your year-end campaign is going to be like and make sure that you're leveraging that Giving Tuesday opportunity to kick it up a notch. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of slide trouble here. So then um, another thing that, uh, that we found interesting when we looked at uh, who's getting the, the, the donation dollars on Giving Tuesday is that um, small organizations really have a, a particularly good opportunity um, that this is really leveling the playing field. So one example of that is that uh, more than three quarters of Giving Tuesday, Canadian Giving Tuesday partners are actually small to mid-sized organizations. So it's really driven by those grassroots organizations. And we looked at some data from BlackBot. Uh, they looked at their entire donor file and, and where the share of Giving Tuesday donations were going by organization size and found that to be expected, the smaller organizations are getting a smaller share, but it's disproportionately large compared to their size. So they're really punching above their weight. And their share of the Giving Tuesday pie has been pretty consistent every year. Grew a little bit in the, in the second year, but has been fairly, fairly stable. The larger organizations always, have always had the biggest share. Uh, that's to be expected as well. Um, but it's these mid-sized organizations that are really growing their share. And although the, that doesn't mean that the large organizations are getting less, their, the, their result hasn't been shrinking because the overall pie has been growing. But what we're seeing is more and more mid-sized organizations getting better and better results and more and more of them coming in and participating in Giving Tuesday and really helping drive that growth of Giving Tuesday. So, that, so it really is a story of, of success and shows us again that as a sector, when we come together and work together, we get a big payoff um, and, this, and concerns about, uh, about competition are really um, overblown. What we should be doing is this kind of activity, and I think it, it, it's an argument for uh, getting involved in Giving Tuesday, obviously, but something that we can be looking at doing all year round is more participation, cooperation, collaboration with organizations for good, because here's an example of that really paying off, particularly for those mid-sized organizations. That concept of a rising tide lifts all boats is really what is driving this, the sector growth of Giving Tuesday. The grassroots nature of it is why it is so successful. It's a huge global phenomenon, really arguably the only truly global celebration. Even things like New Year's are not celebrated the same as everybody else. But last year, the world came together to celebrate Giving Tuesday. And, and yet, that was driven by Webinars with 100 people, uh, people in a boardroom getting together, uh, small events in communities like Guelph and St. Mary's, and, um, and that, that duplicated around the world many, many thousands of times is creating this, this really enormous, truly global celebration of good. And it's driven by organizations like yours who are just getting involved and engaging their supporters to make something huge. And I think that uh, generally, um, as social practitioners and particularly as Canadians who have grown a movement that is m very big for our, for our population size, we have a, a lot to be proud of. So I'm going to hand it over to Liz, who's going to talk about some of the best practices for campaigns. Um, and then if I haven't talked too long, we'll have a few minutes for, uh, for some questions at the end. Liz, take it away. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, and thank you, Woodrow. All right, can you see my screen now? We sure can. Okay, great. Um, so as I said, thank you. Before I get started, um, I think we have a couple of poll questions to ask the, uh, the audience. So the first one, uh, if I could cue the first poll question is, um, have you in the past participated? Um, whoops, I'm not seeing the poll question anymore. Yeah, okay, have you participated by um, either hosting an event, launching a campaign, 
doing something to celebrate. Um, we'll just give you a few seconds to answer that. This is just going to help us to uh, get a sense of, you know, how many of you um, have experience versus versus not with Giving Tuesday. Um, so we'll give it a couple more seconds, and uh, whenever you're ready, Jen. Great. Okay. So we're seeing a little more than 50% of you have already participated. And um, so some of you are new. Quite a, quite a number of you are new to the movement. Um, so um, great. We're on our way to, to getting you introduced to it. Um, and so I'm going to talk about some simple strategies, a couple of simple steps uh, as you start your planning, whether you're new or um, whether you've already been through this, these strategies will apply. Then we'll also go through some example campaigns and hopefully inspire you with some of the stuff that we've seen in the past um, few years that's, you know, uh, pretty creative and will help you. Uh, you know, Woodrow talked about competition, um, but we also talked about the fact that the pie, the giving pie is really growing because of this. So. Um, Creative ideas can really help you to get your share of that growing pie. So um, I guess you won't be surprised to hear that the first simple strategy is we really encourage you to set a goal. Um, we've we've looked at uh, the performance of the campaigns uh, over the past few years, and very consistently, the campaigns that have at least one goal uh, are those that meet or exceed the expectations. Um, over time. So, you know, it can be a fundraising goal. Um, we talked about, um, you know, launching your year-end campaign. We talked about, you know, the growth in monthly donations. Maybe that could be one of your goals. Um, it could be about uh, bringing in new donors, but it can also be non-fundraising. So, again, we've talked about, you know, it, we don't want this to be necessarily fundraising Tuesday, it's Giving Tuesday. So it could be about volunteering or building awareness or um, some other goal that, that aligns with your objectives this year. Um, one thing that is very important, though, is to be very specific. So um, SMART goals are, are the most powerful. Um, those that can be measured, and um, you'll know you know how you did versus, uh, compared to your objective for that goal. So we really encourage you to to think about that. Um, an example of that is this really cute little campaign from an organization called Dans la Rue, and um, their goal was really simple. They wanted to it was a fundraising goal, and they wanted to collect uh, enough funds to fund 500 new pairs of socks for street youth in Montreal. And um, they did a really nice job executing it as well. So a combination of that super specific, simple, but measurable goal um, led them to, to surpass it in that day. It's fantastic. So second strategy or step, once you've set your goal, is to plan an activity. Um, so there's no rule about what this has to be. You know, it, as we've talked about, it can be fundraising, but it can it can also be about volunteering. Uh, it could be making a big announcement. Maybe you have um, some special project that you want to um, launch, or maybe you want to celebrate something to um, you know something that you've had a big success on this year. Maybe you want to create a thank you campaign um, for some for some organizations. Uh, particularly if you're just getting started now, you may find that your fundraising calendar is full enough and that you want to set a different type of objective and a different type of activity. Um, and every, so everything goes for this. Um, the other thing to note is um, that some of the best campaigns that we've seen in the past years have launched, you know, either weeks before and and possibly come to a peak on, on the Giving Tuesday, or um, they're campaigns that have launched and then continued either for the for another week or in well into the month or to the end of December. So um, as you're thinking through and doing this work on, on your goals and, and on your activity, you can keep that in mind. There is no um, hard and fast rule about how that campaign needs to look. The one thing that we that we will say is it's a really great time to get creative. Um, we've even heard the the 
expression, you know, Giving Tuesday has become kind of a learning lab where um, organizations and, and, and the public really feel that you have permission to go out and try different things. And, um, you know, it, it isn't as effective to launch a campaign that, that's really just about give to us today because it's Giving Tuesday. That's not the most compelling way to engage your donors or to engage new followers. Um, and this is really a chance for you to get out of that, get out of the box and try something, try something different. Third simple strategy is communicate with your community. So very important, once you've set your goals and you've got your, your activity um, in, uh, organized, you get out there onto your social media and use your other channels to build some excitement and let people know that this is coming. Uh, rather than waiting until the day of Giving Tuesday. Um, you can gather your own visuals or there are lots of um, images and shareable assets on the givingtuesday.ca website. Uh, we really encourage you to use multiple channels. So email is uh, definitely one of the most powerful channels that we see working really well on Giving Tuesday, but also, of course, social media. It's a highly social campaign. With, um, lots of hashtags and tons and tons of activity going on, which are great ways to, to broaden your audience. We also encourage you to use the phone or uh, in-person meetings. So, you know, just because it's um, predominantly an online campaign, um, it doesn't mean that you can't do something that um, really touches your community in person. Um, in fact, we encourage that. Do make sure that all your communications are driving to a very specific action. So um, if that's fundraising, if you're asking for donations, for example, make sure that your link to your donation page is um, in your communication. Don't make people search um, to find, you know, figure out where to donate to you. If you're asking for donations, make sure you're sending them right to your page. Uh, if you're asking for shares, make sure you're saying that. Share asking. Um, them to share your stories and or asking um, your your supporters to share their own stories. Uh, don't forget about the hashtags. So um, we do have a Canadian hashtag. It's hashtag Giving Tuesday CA. Um, we invite you to use that, and there's much better chance that we'll be able to see uh, your activity and and help to amplify your your posts if you're using that. You can also use the hashtag Giving Tuesday. Um, that has a, a much more global reach, uh, but there's a very good chance that um, because that, that hashtag, they're, they're all going to be trending, but um, the Giving Tuesday without the CA is going to be trending um, even more, and, and we may not be able to see your activity and what you're up to. Uh, the other hashtag we use is Unselfie, and, so, and we'll be talking about that in a couple of minutes when, when we start going through some of the creative examples that we've seen over the past few years. So um, now I'm going to start talking, uh, showing you some of those examples. Um, and these are, you know, good stuff that we've seen around the world and in Canada over the um, over the years, and um, and hopefully give you some inspiration. We have seen a lot of celebrities get involved in Giving Tuesday, and this is fantastic. You know, we we love nothing more than to see a you know somebody that has the kind of reach of, of PK Subban or Malala Yousafzai to to you know start uh, encouraging generosity, and we do love that. But the real power of Giving Tuesday is in the everyday um, your everyday supporter. So these are people that you know. They get them personally. They're either going to fundraise for you, or they're going to get on social media and help to promote your cause. And they're not famous, but this is the real reason that Giving Tuesday has spoken to so many people um, uh, around the world, captured people's imagination and people's hearts because they can own the campaign, they can promote their own their causes of choice, and it's it becomes very personal and very powerful. So we really encourage you to tap into the power of your network. If you have a celebrity, that's fantastic. But if you can get a couple of these people uh, working on your behalf for Giving Tuesday, there's huge power in that. 
These are some of the logos from the Giving Tuesday movements around the world. Um, Woodrow, I think, mentioned we had 150 countries, and and there in 50 of excuse me, 50 of those are official um, Giving Tuesday countries. And um, this is really just to to underline one of the philosophies of the movement, which is that um, it's a very open um, uh, open source sort of unbranded movement. So. Um, these logos were developed in the individual countries with with no brand guideline and, and certainly no requirement to use the heart. Um, but every country that adopts Giving Tuesday somehow ends up with a heart um, that reflects their their local identity and their local objectives. Um, so this is exactly what you can do for Giving Tuesday, whether you're new to it or whether you're um, you've been participating for many years. Take Giving Tuesday and make it what you need it to be. So you can turn it purple if purple is your color for your organization. You can turn it on its head um, as long as it's meeting your objectives and you're doing something to support generosity in, in the philosophy of, um, of the greater good. So here's an example of an organization that took that, took that to heart. And they transformed Giving Tuesday into Giving Shoes Day, um, Dress for Success, and, and because their objective was to collect shoes um, on that day. And that went, this went around North America, and I think it was even adopted by other organizations other than Dress for Success, um, because, you know, making a shoe collection on Giving Tuesday is a, is a fantastic activity. So, um, and we even heard a story of of a horse shelter that wanted to, um, it was either raise funds or, I think it was raise funds for um, shoeing their horses. And um, so they used Giving Shoes Day as well, which is kind of kind of fun. Uh, another um, adaptation of Giving Tuesday um, along those same lines is the Giving Zoo Day. And what we really loved about this was that it's a collaboration across a whole um, network of zoos. and and Rather than these people, these organizations feeling that they were competing um, with each other, they decided to collaborate and create this um, promotion of of zoos um, as a whole, and it really, really worked well for them. So um, that's it. I mean, one of these th things that we find so inspiring is this concept of collaboration for Giving Tuesday, rather than the competition. Another really effective strategy for fundraising on Giving Tuesday is the matching gift. Um, so matching gifts we know are powerful um, anytime, but particularly on Giving Tuesday, this is a great opportunity to um, go out uh, either to an existing donor or perhaps a new donor and um, encourage them to dedicate their gift as a matching gift for Giving Tuesday, which allows you to message about um, multiplying impact and can be uh, one of the most effective um, fundraising strategies for Giving Tuesday. Um, Jen, I would like to ask whether the polls are working, because we do have a quick poll, and if not, um, no worries, but if, we, if you can launch poll number three. Yeah, thank you. All right, so um, the question is, do you have a current donor, uh, either an individual, a foundation, a corporation, that you could approach right now for Giving Tuesday uh, 2018 matching funds? So give that some thought. We'll give you a couple of seconds. And just while people are answering that poll, I'll just jump in here and mention that um, we see lots of examples of matching gifts doing extraordinarily well on Giving Tuesday. And uh, Donors Choose in the U.S. did a really interesting controlled AD test uh, by email. They did a matching campaign on a random Tuesday in November and compared that to the identical campaign on a Giving Tuesday. The only difference was the day it was done and the fact that they said it was Giving Tuesday in the test campaign. And that Giving Tuesday campaign did uh, more than 30% better than the control. So this is an example. We always say, you know, don't don't tell people to give to you because it's Giving Tuesday. That's not a compelling app. But we do definitely see uh, an amplifying effect of Giving Tuesday. I think it's related to people wanting to get involved in this huge movement in their country and in the world. But that's also very personal and and um, and 
taking place in their community. So it's, uh, it was an in interesting, um, something you can share with uh, either an existing donor as a reason to leverage their gift or as a way to bring in a donor um, by showing them that they can get a lot more bang for their buck, a lot more impact with a matching gift on Giving Tuesday. Awesome, Woodrow, thank you. So, um, yeah, just showing the results, it looks like there are some of you that already have a donor in mind, um, some that, that don't, and then um, not sure, I hope, for the no's and the not sure's, um, this might inspire you to, um, to make that ask and, um, and, and uh, make a compelling campaign if, you're, if you are doing fundraising uh, that has a match in it. All right. Um, so moving to, no, slide's not advancing. Um, another example uh, that we've seen that we that we really loved was this collaboration. So this is a business in in Halifax called Wilson Home Heating, and they're collaborating um, with three charities um, to create a hug campaign in the streets of Halifax. And they put up a ten thousand dollar gift, um, and they they sent out hug teams uh, through the city streets. And um, for every hug, donated ten dollars to the charity of uh, of choice of the person getting the hug. So um, it's really a fun idea to have multiple organizations working together, and it was really engaging for the public, um, as well as um, surpassing the the hug quotas. Um, were surpassed and the, the business actually kicked in a little more funding behind it and the media loved it. So um, if you're if you're thinking about ways to you know to get some awareness, um, this this kind of a creative idea can really be powerful to, to bring the media in to cover your organization. Another really popular um, and pretty low barrier um, activity that you can think about is um, is doing a volunteer engagement of some kind. So we know that on Giving Tuesday, lots and lots of people, I think it was about two million Canadians were volunteering um, and or making a commitment to volunteer. Um, so we know companies and, and individuals are out there looking for opportunities on this day. Um, so this could be a real opportunity to take advantage of that. Another example of creative fun activity is to get um, to do some awareness and online um, work with your supporters and volunteers uh, around unselfie or you know using social media it doesn't have to be unselfie but using social media to bring awareness to your campaign and to your objectives so these are those everyday people that that you know that you have in your community that are are really happy to support you um, by promoting you on social media and um, Using hashtag unselfie is, is a really fun way to do that as well, and it allows us to, to see what you're up to, so we can try to help ampl amplify your, um, your activities. Another way that we, we love seeing people get involved um, and organizations getting involved is through donations, um, uh, making a blood donor um, appointment or um, an organ donor commitment. So. Um, this is pretty widespread now for Giving Tuesday. One of the twists on it that, that I particularly love is the idea of, a, of an organization, a charity organization, choosing to um, all make a commitment to give blood within your organization, or a community doing the same thing, to do a community-wide blood drive. Um, so this is the concept of communities giving back and or charities actually giving back um, you know, to celebrate Giving Tuesday. Another pretty low barrier way to participate, if you feel like your fundraising calendar is, is full for some reason and you can't do some fundraising, um, it's simply a thank you campaign. We've seen a lot of really creative executions of this using either video or um, photo on, on social media. Um, and it can also be by telephone um, or in person. So just saying thank you to your donors for a great year or to your volunteers or your staff. So speaking of thank you, two days after Giving Tuesday, um, there's a there's a day called Thank You Thursday, 
and um, and it also has its own hashtag. So this has become something that's pretty big. Um, most organizations are are using this to say thank you for uh, to celebrate you know what they've raised through their campaigns, um, and and or simply saying thank you um, without necessarily making a campaign announcement. But um, we really encourage you. The power of thank you is you know we all know. Um, how great that is, and we've heard some superb stories about how this can actually extend your your donation timeline as well. Um, so lots of lots of stuff to think about for saying thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce now Nicole, who's going to talk to us about community campaigns and uh, community movements. So go ahead, Nicole. Hi, Liz. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So my name is Nicole. I'm from the team here at Canada Helps. Um, and I'm here to talk about five different ways you can get your communities involved to take part in a community movement where you live. Um, so if you're wondering about what a community movement is, Woodrow, I know, mentioned this a little earlier. Um, a co community movement is a group of people, charities, and community leaders who come together to celebrate Giving Tuesday on more of a local level. So um, often these community campaigns are hosted more on a civic level where there's cities that come together with different partners to celebrate in their community. Um, or sometimes there have been a few um, movements where it's focused around a cause. I, I'm aware of one that's um, uh, specific to science related charities um, that come together in order to celebrate Giving Tuesday. Um, these community movements are normally led by one or a team of people um, that lead and mobilize different members of their communities um, to take part and give on Giving Tuesday. Um, and these movements start with you. So it only takes one person to raise their hand and volunteer their time to bring everyone together and, and celebrate the day. Um, and I also should mention that if you are part of a charity um, and you are wanting to know where your organization plays in, there's actually several movements across the country that have been led by either one person from a charity or an organization that has taken the lead um, to say, hey, you know, we're going to bring our entire community together to celebrate Giving Tuesday. Um, so with that, there are 40 community movements across the country, um, everywhere from Vancouver to PEI and everywhere in between. Um, and on the next slide, I'll just show you um, that there are um, several that brand their own campaign. So the top left is Nova Scotia gives more their own community organization campaign. Um, that one, of course, is province-wide. There's Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, um, everywhere in between. Um, and it, these organizations come together to celebrate, like I said, on a local level. Um, if you're interested to know if there's already a community campaign neighborhood, you can actually go to GiveTuesday.ca and there's a list available, or if not, you can definitely start your own. Um, I'll go to um, the next slide with it. So if you're wanting to start your own community campaign or if you're already getting started, um, the first tip that I'll share um, is to get in touch with your municipality or your, or your local government. There's several um, communities across the country, a lot of different municipalities proclaim specific days. Uh, Vancouver, Toronto, Calgary, and so many more have pro proclaimed Giving Tuesday as an official day in the city and celebrate it. It's a great photo opportunity to take a picture with your mayor and celebrate the day further. Or um, there's also the option if you have a landmark in your community, like the Toronto sign and the uh, bottom right corner, um, you can light it up in different colors and you can get in touch with your municipality if that's an option. Um, so it's a great way to celebrate. Um, if you, I'll move to slide, the next slide with tip uh, number two, and it's to get organized. Um, so host a meeting or a launch party with key stakeholders that are wanting to bring your community together um, to celebrate the day. It doesn't have to be a major production, um, but brainstorm, connect, connect with charities and businesses, and the meeting is really to inspire people um, to get started and get organized. And, you know, even though Giving Tuesday is 46 days away, believe it or not, it's not too late. Um, it's the perfect time. I'm actually, I'm quite certain Toronto um, met last night to get their community campaign off the ground, which is very exciting. Um, so it's just a time to brainstorm, set goals, and, and get started. 
Um, so tip number three um, is to host a local activity on Giving Tuesday. And I know Woodrow and Liz kind of mentioned these different activations, but um, you know, it's great to also host an uh, in-person event, even though Giving Tuesday is it's very driven online as well on social media um, and you know through email and such um, so you know the top left corner is a picture of actually Guelph they got a whole bunch of charities to uh, line a major corridor in a local mall and they had a giving fair and it, uh, local shoppers were able to stop by and learn how they could give to their favorite charities in their community. Um, you know, our team at Canada Helps actually joined a couple of civic movements last year. Um, there's the top one, top middle one in Calgary and the bottom right one in Vancouver to hand out gift cards, which is really exciting. So these in-person events um, really helps to grow the movement further and get people in person excited about Giving Tuesday as well. Uh, so tip number four. Um, is to really just put out the ask and reach out to your community and see who can get involved. It does not hurt to ask. Um, see if there are local businesses that can get involved and choose a charity that they want to support and um, support that organization in whichever way they choose to. There's an example, the middle um, example, our most charity actually in Mississauga. They uh, worked with a local burger joint um, a couple of years ago and a uh, dollars from uh, each burger sold that day went to support the um, charity. Um, and organizations can get really creative as to how they partner with these businesses. But it's just a matter of getting everyone involved. Um, so tip number five, the last tip um, when it comes to community campaigns, and Liz touched on this, uh, is to get social. Um, even though there's, of course, the in-person aspect that I just mentioned, um, getting social and joining the conversation online is also very important. Um, as part of your community movement, uh, develop a local hashtag. So one in Mississauga is Saga Gives, uh, Guelph Gives has had their own hashtag, Toronto Gives, NS Gives for Nova Scotia. Um, use different creative ways to um, share on Giving Tuesday, whether it's going live on Instagram or Facebook, um, or tweeting throughout the day, um, or even using community influencers as com campaign ambassadors, and also do not forget the unselfies. Uh, so with that, I will pass this off to Liz to finish off. Thanks, Nicole. So the last um, thing we want to talk about is media. So we talked about getting social, um, but the mainstream media have, from the beginning, uh, really been interested in telling the Giving Tuesday story. So every year they approach us, what's happening in uh, Toronto? What's happening in Vancouver? What's happening in Winnipeg? And in the small towns too. So we really encourage you, as you're thinking through your uh, your goals and um, your activities and how you're going to communicate this to think about the media as well because this can be a big opportunity. If you have something that the media can come and attend, any kind of event or an open house or an announcement, um, then let us know and let them know. We're um, going to be posting on the Giving Tuesday site uh, resources for reaching out with your own um, press release and um, we'd be really happy to support you as well if you let us know what your events are and we can try to shed, shed some light on those. So just for really encouraging you to think about that as you um, get into this planning cycle. So uh, we hope we've inspired you um, and, and that you now believe that the public and, and for you as organizations, um, that there's a way that everybody can get involved um, and, and really do great stuff on Giving Tuesday. So please make sure that you're part of, of the action and don't just miss this opportunity. And um, if you're, um, so Nicole talked about the community movement. Uh, if you are in a community where, as far as you know, there is no movement, please do get in touch with us if you're interested in starting something in your area. If you are not already an official partner on givingtuesday.ca, please consider registering as a partner. You can set up your own page and you can add a donate button to benefit your organization um, from that page. And um, you'll also find lots of resources on givingtuesday.ca. And um, when you sign up, then you become part of our community and we will 
let you know when anything important is happening, when there's um, any new resources, etc. So we do have a few minutes now um, to take some questions. And um, I know there were a lot of questions that came in beforehand. Hopefully we have addressed most of them in, in today's talk. Um, but here's your chance to, um, to reiterate or ask any clarifications or questions. Uh, so please don't be shy. All right. Thank you, Liz. So um, we did have a few questions come in, but just to inspire some folks out there, I'm just going to put up uh, some starter questions as an example. Um, so if you can see my screen, those are just a few starter questions, but I'm just going to get the ball rolling here and open up the floor. Um, so if anyone wants to jump in here, uh, Liz Woodrow or Nicole. Um, first question I've got is, we plan to do a 10 times campaign. Do you suggest having an event in addition to that or to simply focus on the 10 times? Sorry, I was on mute there. <laughs> um, focus on the, can you just repeat the end of that question? Focus on what was focus the last on, part of that? Um, on the 10 times. A 10 times campaign. Oh, I see. So, I, I mean, I think that a typical best practice is to think about Giving Tuesday as a moment as part of your overall campaign, end of your campaigning. So, absolutely take advantage of the opportunity. If you want to do something that is specific and it's one-off for Giving Tuesday, that's great. Um, but what I would suggest is that you integrate that moment and that opportunity when people want to get involved in something as part of your existing campaign. Don't think about them so much as two different things, but think about that as a chance to kick off a campaign really strongly or end a campaign with a big boost or get a mid-campaign lift, those kinds of things. You're giving to an effective call to action and, and provide some urgency for people to act. Um, and you can combine that with your existing campaign, so you're not trying to, uh, so your your messaging stays straightforward and simple, and then it also is an easy transition into a campaign that can last all December. Thank you, Woodrow. I'm going to jump to the next question here. It's uh, from Tessa, and she asks, does GuideStar monitor Canadian charities, or are there other alternatives for Canada? So, that's a good question. So, um, Somebody at Canada Health might be able to answer that better. I believe that GuideStar oper does operate in Canada as well. Um, that said, I mean, I, I think in terms of engaging your supporters, I would think about about sending them to your messaging um, and, and what you have to say about your organization. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next question here is from Pam. Do you have a list of companies or corporations who are looking to pair up with charities? So we don't. What we do have is lots of resources on our site to help organizations understand how to engage businesses effectively and help businesses understand how to incorporate Giving Tuesday into their own corporate social responsibility or fundraising objectives. So we have lots of resources to help in that respect, um, and we're also ha happy to connect with uh, organizations to kind of ideate uh, those partner partnerships or campaign ideas. Um, but no, we don't we don't do any actual matchmaking. Um, but there's lots of resources on our site, GivingTuesday.ca, to help you to do that. All right. Awesome. And a question here from Ruth. A donor has recently indicated that she would like to give us $25,000. I'd like to ask her if she'd be willing to use that for a matching fund. Could you explain how that would be set up, for example, match up to $25,000, even though we know we're going to get that money? Yeah, well, I think that that's, that's a, a great idea, and we've seen lots of organizations do exactly that successfully. So um, the what typically you do is you say to that donor, look, we can get a lot more bang for our for your donation dollar um, by using this to match. Um, and then a time-limited match up to a maximum of 25000 is is a great way to, to make that donor's, uh, double that, that donor's dollars. Um, there's, there's no reason why that person doesn't, I mean, if you don't reach your match target, there's no reason why that person can't decide to, to donate the 25000 In fact, even on very public matching campaigns from corporations, we often see that if for whatever reason you don't reach the match, then the corporation can say, look, we want to give you we're very happy with that things we're doing it anyway. So more often what we see is the match being um, uh, 
he can take advantage of very early in the day uh, with the exceeding part. For example, from what was going to the perfect number of ten thousand dollars matches now raised hundred and fifty thousand dollars last year. Um, so I think just go for it. Uh, the the upside for you and your donor and the impact for your supporters is, is just a win win win. Awesome. Thanks, Woodrow. Uh, question here from Michael. One question I had was about larger gifts. I work at the South Saskatchewan Community Foundation, so gifts at SSCF are ten thousand to twenty five million. How can Giving Tuesday inspire legacy gifts and endowment gifts? Yeah, great question. I and and actually, there's uh, we have a a webinar and a ten tips video with a with a um, an associated uh, uh, slide deck on our site um, that was done by uh, Paul Nazareth, uh, formerly at uh, Canada Helps, now with the uh, Canadian Association of Gift Planners, that that addresses some of those very topics and talks about some of the approaches to. Uh, use Giving Tuesday for that opportunity. Uh, so I encourage you to go to the site, and if you uh, if you just, uh, I'll I'll find the link actually, and then we can share it out. But uh, but we have resources on the site specifically for that. Great. Can I add to that answer, Woodrow? This is Liz. Um, <clears throat> another example that we've seen in community foundations specifically is um, uh, a communication out to your donor advice uh, DAF holders, uh, if uh, either if they haven't already or you know if you know that they haven't contributed anything from their fund this year, you can say it's Giving Tuesday come up uh, coming up. Um, time to think about what you know what donations you might want to make out of your fund, and uh, just give them a gentle nudge that way. Um, I think in Vancouver the number was in the millions when they sent out that note. Um, uh, there 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 were millions granted in response. Awesome. Thank you, Liz and Woodrow. I think we have one more question that we can sneak in here um, while we have time. Uh, this one's from Melissa, who asks, when do you suggest to start and end campaigning? Last year, our campaign started and ended on the one day. We advertised it ahead of time, then opened up the offer for Giving Tuesday, then ended it. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I, and part of the answer to that question is, however, it fits into your overall campaign plans and communication plan for end of year. Um, that said, we definitely see that um, uh, Network for Good, for example, has seen that organizations that kick off their fundraising, their, their end of year fundraising on Giving Tuesday, uh, do many times better on the month of December. So uh, we, we definitely encourage you whatever you do on Giving Tuesday, to use that as the starting point on your December, not just a, not just a, a, a flash in the pan. Um, take advantage of the fact that there's an urgency to act today because it's Giving Tuesday, but then use that momentum all, all month to make sure you get maximum benefit. Um, we have seen some data to show that um, talking to donors well in advance up to uh, at least four weeks in advance and letting them know that, that, that Giving Tuesday is coming can be effective. Um, and, uh, and there's definitely, you know, think about in advance how you can leverage thank you and leverage asking your donors to share your campaign to, to make sure that, that you're getting maximum effect from your Giving Tuesday results for the rest of the month. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, I guess that looks like uh, all the time we have for today. Thank you so much to Liz, Woodrow, and Nicole for sharing your tips and insights and those beautiful stats that we saw. Uh, hopefully this inspires everyone for their Giving Tuesday campaigns. Uh, as always, thank you to our attendees for joining. And remember, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.